Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing this month? You are? Only this group, it seems to be doing good. How about you guys? Anybody back there doing all right? All right, cool. <laughs> so uh, today I wanted to talk to you guys about computer science and the changing faces of it. And hopefully I can encourage some of you by the end to consider it as a field. Um, and then hopefully you guys can ask me some questions if we have time as well, and I'll be able to get to them. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as was said, I work at Google. So let's ask first, how many Google products can you name? What do we do? Can anyone to say? Go ahead. What was that? Google Glasses, this is true. Anybody else? Go ahead. Yes, this is true, our search page. Go ahead. Yes, that's cool that you guys know that. You may also know that we uh, work with YouTube as well, and we have dozens of products. So a lot of people sometimes think that Google is strictly the website for searching, but we do several, several things, and all of these things touch base with computer science. So computer science is basically taking computers or computational thinking and applying it to problems, to solve problems, right, or to answer questions. And we have this thing called algorithms, it's kind of like patterns, to make us solve them also very quickly, right? So we can apply this to a lot of different models. So some of you guys seen video games or movies and we apply computer science there. We also do it with athletes where we can actually measure uh, how fast they're going and maybe help them go faster. We can work with predicting weather um, or when the climate will change. Maybe some of you guys have played Guitar Hero. A lot of these things have computer scientists behind them. Further, you know, there's medicine as well, music. I used to do beat productions. Um, and fashion even, and of course your cell phones, are all related to computer science in one way or another. So a lot of people though think computer scientists are these folks here, right? Um, incorrect. So, and a lot of people see these folks as computer scientists as well. And they don't really look like me, do they? I don't know. Right, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself and my background. So, I went to college and I studied sociology and computer science and design. I taught art and drawing and things like that. Then I went and got a master's degree in something called human-computer interaction and started a PhD in human factors engineering, right? And this all turned into this career as a user experience designer and researcher. So I've worked with Intel and IBM and Accenture. I've also worked at Harvard, I've worked at MIT, um, a lot of these places, and that's kind of what got me to Google. But before I was any of this, before I went to college, what might be interesting to know is that I'm actually a child of foster care. I'm also Haitian American, that's a Caribbean country. Um, my parents um, have had lots of troubles in my life. My parents were illegal um, and uneducated. First generation, we dealt with issues with doubt. I didn't have really good grades. We didn't know when our next meal was coming or, I mean, we kept losing our homes, right? Um, and so I came to, I, mean, I was born in the States, but my parents, my family lived in an illegal community, so everyone only spoke Creole, that's the language my, my people speak. And um, for up to eight years, living in America, I could not speak English. Until I was eight years old and went to school and I was mixing English with the, my language. I knew a little bit of Spanish too, so I was speaking this crazy language at school. I also thought mom meant authority figure, so I called all the teachers mom, either you were male or a guy, <laughs> female. Um, so, I mean, eventually I got to this place when I was 12 years old where I was asking my family so many questions that they could not answer that they decided um, to, well, I should say, do not do this, but I did at one point read the back of a magazine that said, do you have questions? <laughs> I said, I have questions, and I went to the place that had the questions, and I mean, it was the actual address of the magazine. They don't answer questions, and I asked them all these questions about why is the background of my screen green, and why is the sky blue, and why is it that one leg feels longer than the other, and just lots of interesting questions. They really couldn't help me, but they dropped me off in a program sort of like what you're experiencing today, where I learned how to make robots, interestingly enough, right? From there, then they put me in this little program and said, hey, 
learn to draw. I didn't know what that had to do with computer science, right? I didn't know I was doing anything related to computer science. I just was drawing on a screen using a program called Photoshop. From there, they said, hey, if you like to sing or rap or anything, why don't you use this machine and you know, speak into the mic and record it? All these things I didn't know from 12 on were grooming me to be what I am today, which is a computer scientist. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about I, what I do in user experience. So we're going to talk about what's wrong with these pictures. You guys down? All right. Anything wrong with this picture? Nothing? What, how, do we, how, what, how do you pour this thing out? <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this. Can someone tell me, this is a door. What do you do? How do you get out? What about this warning? So do you exit this way? So if you were in front of this door, would you go out this way? Or, or maybe, or are you confused? Because I'm confused. Anybody else confused? <laughs> All right, let's try something else. This says, do you really want to cancel this upload? So how do you cancel it? Do you press OK or do you press cancel? We don't, I'm, I'm also still very confused. I don't know the answer to this. I'm gonna skip this next slide because some of you guys won't know about this. <laughs> but let's look at this. This is one of those credit card machines you see at the supermarkets and stuff. So it says credit. So you pay, I guess, with a credit card. It's $6.98 and it says okay with a question mark. Okay, so what do we do? How do we make this go next? So some of you guys said press enter. You know, surprising, some people press the button that says credit because it says credit up there, right? And some people press the button that says debit because the arrow was pointing to OK, right? So what I do in my day to day is look at things like this, like weird designs or bad design, and I make them better and easier for people to use. So when you guys get in front of this, you know exactly what to press, and it doesn't take you seven extra steps before you get there. So user experience is looking at what we're doing in our day to day, the actual person, and trying to make their experience to an extent um, better, easier, um, um, in any way that you can, well, in a way you study the behavior of a person, right? And then, based on how they interact with things, you change the experience of the product. So, you heard me saying design, and you said, heard me saying art. So I started off doing like art, drawing really, really bad Mr. Potato Head things, right? Um, but design is in everything. So whether it's a pen or a table or anything, you can take it and change it and it's still design. So this is not art. But what we do, or what I do in my day to day, is use design to solve problems. So let's give you this image, for example. How do you turn on the top left? Which one do you turn? Does anyone know? Have you guys seen, this is a stove by the way. You guys seen stoves like this with four things? It's a little confusing, right? So here's what I would do if I saw this thing. I would make it easier to understand so now you know what goes to what. See how that works? So, cool. <laughs> so let's talk about why I want to get you guys into this field. Some statistics. For one, there's a huge demand for computer scientists. It's going through the roof. Let me show you the data. This is kind of a little confusing. I'm going to go walk through it with you guys, right? So this is engineering. This yellow category says jobs, and the grads is how many people graduate with degrees, right? So as you can see, there are a few jobs and more graduates. Over here, same thing. You see a few jobs and a lot of graduates for life sciences. Math, the same thing. Now notice the people graduating with degrees in computer science. And look at how many jobs there are. It looks like there's not enough people to take on the jobs, which means one of two things, right? One, if you, have a, if you get into the field of computer science, most likely you'll be able to get a job, right? Because there's so many. And the other thing is, most likely there'll be higher demand for you. They're gonna pay more for you because there's so few people. Does that make sense? Like if they know, if I know I'm working for Apple and Google needs engineers, they'll probably say whatever Apple's paying, we'll pay on top of that because we don't have anybody. 
So what we're seeing, though, is there's a decreased interest in computer science. So even though I showed you those numbers where there are more jobs than computer scientists, the computer science field is going down. So it's, going, it's slowly going down. In fact, women who originally, back in the 80s, um, when computer science was kind of like this big, booming thing, women and men were equal in doing computer science, right? Computer science was some, supposed to be something that women did because typing was kind of something that women did, so it was like a field to get into, but it's been down 37%. That's just a lot <laughs> since then. So I want to encourage you guys, and we're gonna try numbers to try to help out, right? Attorneys make an average of maybe 55,000 if you wanna go into law. The financial services average about $62,000, and we have doctors averaging about $74,000. Computer science is growing and is actually higher than all of these at $86,000 on average. So it's really a really good field to be in to help your families or to um, potentially do uh, really well if that's what you, I mean, financially, if that's what's something that interests you. So. These are some examples of how the times are changing. I showed you guys those faces in the beginning of some of the individuals, and they didn't quite look the same. It looked a lot like maybe white America. Um, but here we have the head of engineering. At, he's an engineering director at Google, and he's a black man. We have um, a VP business partner at Google. She's a black woman. We're creating programs, and we're just trying to get people from all backgrounds, Latino, women, Native American, just different backgrounds to bring them into this technology, because we have found through research that when you have different people working together, it actually makes problems um, solving easier and better. Um, so for example, if you have a problem in your community, Let's say that stove example. Some people may not have stoves like that, but they need people from different backgrounds who may have experienced different types of problems to fix those things. Does that make sense? Maybe. So let's talk about some myths. A lot of people think that computer science fields are going outside the United States. This is not true. There are plenty of jobs here. Um, also, they're saying that computer science is programming and video games. Did I? Is this true, guys? So we know that it's broader now, right? And there's a lack of diversity in computer science and technology. But we're gonna change that, hopefully, and we can fix that by trying to get you guys more, in um, um, to get you guys interested, and hopefully today you're gonna do a few different things to get involved with computer science and learn a little bit of what um, you can contribute. Also, just to let you know, these tech companies aren't just all computer science. We do have engineers, but we also have marketing folks, finance folks, lawyers, testers. So the computer science field in general, or those industries, have opportunities for lots of different kinds of people um, if you are interested in other fields. So I'm going to open it up to questions. And you guys can ask me anything if you'd like to. Oh, go ahead. I went to a school in Michigan called University of Michigan, and then I also went to a school in Boston called Suffolk University. What was that? Oh, sorry, I'm hearing two questions. Oh, actually, what's really exciting about what I do is I travel the world. So I definitely, my family lives in Haiti. I spent a month in Haiti when I first started at Google, and I just did my work down there, because the nice thing about being a computer scientist is you don't have to be in the office to do your job. So I, mean, I just, you guys, I don't know if any of you guys like soccer, but I just came back from the World Cup, you know? Yes. <laughs> and I was working at the Google office and watching soccer all day. <laughs> so it was great. And I went to a few games, of course, too. Okay. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Is Google soon making the, a Google car? What was that? Is Google's making a Google car? Yeah, actually we came out in news uh, recently about these cars that we have that are like two person. They're gonna be in like downtown areas or in cities. Uh, they don't go very fast and they don't have a wheel. So if you've seen cars with a wheel inside, it's just two seats in an emergency stop button. Um, how many years have you been working in Google? So actually, I've been working at Google for um, over a year now, however, I've been a Google scholar for many, many years. So while I was in college, I developed a watch. 
I know that's crazy, like a little watch with a screen, and I just designed it, right? And it, it was supposed to help with people who were lazy. I wanted them to get up and move more. So it would change color if you moved more. And Google liked the idea and gave me money for school. So while I was in school, they paid for me to go to school. They came and visited me while I was at school, um, fed me. They brought me to campus. And so for a few years after that, they stayed in touch. Like when they're really interested in somebody, they, they keep you in mind for hopefully future opportunities. So I worked for a few other places um, before I worked for Google. But I've been in the tech industry for quite a few years now. Yep. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. What's Google X? What was that? What's Google X? What is Google Ads? X. 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 Oh, yeah, sure. Google X is one of those things. It's basically top secret project. It's so secret, I can't even tell the people sitting next to me at work. <laughs> right? So it's one of those things where I can't tell my family about it. You would think I would at least tell other people at Google about because we let our business, I mean, they, we talk about everything, all our secrets technically, but it's like another level of secrecy. It's like we cannot let the world know because this is so cool that just hearing about it will cause problems. Other people might copy it, you know, things like that. Um, any more questions or am I out of town? I think we have one more question here. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, you discovered coding when you were about these kids' age in an after school program in Boston? Yes. Can you tell them a little bit about why this is so important right now, what they're doing with you and your own experience? Sure. Actually, this is really interesting research, and this has been proven. People who end up becoming computer scientists, on average, start at your age, right? So in fact, I talked to, um, we did a re some research at Google to see the average women when they got introduced to computer science, and I think 98% of them said around 12. Right? And so that's around the age I started. So the chances are if you learn or play around with this stuff early, you'll be interested in it now, right? So a lot of people who get into computer science later on, like maybe in college, they don't have as much of an interest. The other thing is they may not know as much about it, but now you guys have a lot more information. You know that it goes beyond just programming all day. You know you can be an artist and be a computer scientist. You can like fashion and be a computer scientist. You can be a doctor and be a computer scientist. So I hope that helped. If okay. you guys have any more questions, you can find have, me later. We have time for one more question oh, back right. here. And yes. then I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to keep going. But one more question here. Would you ever quit your job? Would I ever quit my job? Yes, I actually would. Um, it, it's one of those things that you get to a point where I think you are so good at your craft, maybe, that you want to work for yourself. And so I eventually will probably open up my own company and do similar things or do something different. I really, really, um, really want to take something back home to my country because there's not a lot of folks in computer science that are there. So I want to open up some after school programs um, in the Caribbean as well. Um, hopefully start maybe an engineering firm in the Caribbean one day. Thanks guys for your time. I hope you guys learned something.